del autor publicado en Harvard, Business Week, TechCrunch, VentureBeat y GigaOM es Larry Chiang. Networking is a big part of CS183E, which is why I'm devoting an entire lecture to it. Uh, CS183E, specifically on editing a startup, resuscitating something that's dead, working on a cadaver to build our practice, incorporates a good amount of networking, which sometimes people neglected. Right, Brady? Brady doesn't neglect networking, neither should you. So in networking, we're looking at building a deal flow of people who are potentially whales. And a whale is a person who significantly helps our business and networking where we're also helping other people as well. The networking dynamic is interesting and unique because when you're an Ivy douchebag, the way that you reach out to janitors and service staff and people that help you is markedly different. It's such a rare thing that uh, IVs network with other IVs. Not rare, but the dynamic for that is normal. And in the real world, that almost never happens. And there's a case in point where two first round first picks are meeting at the Super Bowl. In 50 Super Bowls, that's never happened. In the entrepreneurship world, that's what entrepreneurs from Ivy's are looking to try to do all the time. They're just trying to network with the best of the best of the best. And that's not how running a startup is. So in doing networking with uh, executives, um, a lot of times when you're at YC, the methodology, you just look down on networking. And when I was paying particularly close attention to Adora and Aaron of Homejoy, they executed a great guagua guacamole recipe where they did a water bottle hack. And that was it. They just did the one recipe and they later on ran out of money and they later on had made a, a, a sequence of mishaps. That's why we're doing editing. And when we're doing editing, networking is a huge component of this CS183E effort. True story, Bill Gurley legendary VC at Benchmark, he got his start with a Palm Pilot full of networking. A Palm Pilot is like an iPhone uh, Zero. It's a PDA, personal digital assistant. He got a Palm Pilot full of networking contacts and the reason that's important is that networking is important and you've got to somehow prime the pump to get your networking flow up. I'm not saying spend full time with it, I'm just saying reach out to specifically conferences, which I will delve into deeply, where we wanna ace one or two industry conferences that rubber stamp us, the rising stars. What's in your iPhone 9? Is it just a couple of apps? Is it just a couple of contacts from LinkedIn? We don't wanna do that. What we wanna do is we wanna use our iPhone, the call function, the text function, the email publish post function. So the way that we can fill our iPhone 9s with great networking contacts is to do a smidge of work in the real world that seemingly is not going to scale but will absolutely up your deal flow for networking and networking contacts. Right now, uh, I'm known as a networking guy, yet I use LinkedIn zero. I don't think it's good. I don't think it works. That's why I tweeted, hey, you know, what are some good LinkedIn uh, networking strategies? I don't know of any. I really don't know of any. I, I don't use it. Um, I, the, the people that I know, I know, LinkedIn stuff. If you're a LinkedIn product manager, I can see how that might be. But in networking, there's Stack, there's GitHub, there's Twitter. And what those forms of networking and WordPress, what those forms of networking does do is they actually show and reveal a transparency to the amount of work that you put in. Critical. I'm switching gears a little bit. I'm going to talk about a alum from Stanford, Doug Baldwin. Doug Baldwin. He is an undrafted free agent, UDFA. The reason I bring him up is 
he went to go network for a job in the NFL after seven, 32 teams. Is that how many NFL teams there are? 30 some? 32? I don't know. Seven rounds, I do know this. Seven rounds of the NFL draft, they said no. So when you're networking, be mindful that most of the time you're networking at a place that doesn't actively want you. You're networking in a place that did not actually invite you. That's why you need to hustle and participate. I will hustle and do whatever it takes. That's a quote by a fellow YC alum. When I say fellow, I mean your fellow, not mine. He's my friend, um, Evan Reyes. He talked about how he attributed a lot of his networking and work and equity building effort to his Wisconsin work ethic. He set aside his Stanford GSB, learned to code, and networks as if he's a community college grad. That kind of work is critical because in the real world, nobody cares that you graduated in the top 10% with a really high GPA. I mean, don't they just automatically give A's at your school at Stanford? Networking is tough. He never responded. I kept on emailing him and I kept on sending him company updates for seven months. This is continuing with Evan Reyes. He's a YC alum, he's a Stanford GSB alum, yet he set both those two things aside and he kept on asking for a great board member, which I will not refer to, but he's awesome. I want to keep the focus on Evan Reyes where his effort his, he could have easily given up. That's why you're editing, because somebody else gave up, and now you are having to edit and ungive up, and that's what CPR is on a cadaver, and that's what networking is in the constraint of working on the cadaver, which is somebody else's zombie startup. On Timbulo, okay, ever heard of it? It's the canvas strategy. Now, when you're networking to try to resuscitate your piece of crap startup that somebody handed you and now is like, hey, do CPR on this thing. Try to get it to live again. On Team Below is a huge part of it because you're gonna need to do the canvas method to make somebody else look good. You're gonna look great at the end of this. You're doing networking, you're resuscitating it, you're already through lecture number four, and lecture number 19 and 20, you're actually gonna be a VC. Lecture 20, you're gonna be able to go retire on the job. On team below is you making someone else look good. Google that phrase and read it, it's awesome. Speaking, speaking is a huge part of networking and I'm super thankful to Gamma Phi Beta at University of Arizona. Gamma Phi Beta House at University of Arizona. They gave me a great speaking opportunity and were very complimentary with their social invitations after chapter. Speaking matters because once you speak, you're the expert. So you're gonna be actually networking at conferences and speaking at conferences that you're not invited to. Let me repeat that. You're gonna be speaking and networking at conferences like that you are not invited to. In the same way that you're networking in an industry that isn't necessarily open arms welcoming your disruption. Write this down. Gua gua guacamole recipe number four. Like I have a speech impediment, GUA, GUA, guacamole.com. The reason it's called gua, gua, guacamole is you want to add a bunch of steps because everyone else is trying to do one step instant guacamole. Recipe number four is how to speak at a conference you're crashing. Write this down, how to speak at a conference you're crashing. You can't just Google it and get it. You need to Google it as an image search. I did a movie poster on it. I did a poster of gua, gua guacamole recipe number four and the sequential steps for how exactly to speak at a conference. Basically, you're looking for a fallout and you're going to be uh, interviewing a celebrity that's an industry celebrity that has a book that you will give away five to 10 copies of. What happens when I say the word crashing? Does it make you nervous? Does even going to a party make you nervous? You can bring Brady. Brady's a big hit at parties. The reason I bring this up is starting a company is essentially crashing an industry. And studies have shown that people need to feel like they're getting invited in order for them to attend an event. 
Well, no industry is going to open arms, invite you. It doesn't matter if two large organizations, Stanford and YC, invited you. That is not a rite of passage. That is just not. And that's why they died. That's why you're editing a startup that died, because that's not a rite of passage. Doing the rite of passage is the rite of passage. So entering a party and then running alpha. Painstakingly high amount of work to iron out all the little kinks, tidbits, roadblocks, adding in tip strategies, techniques, and ideas on how to exactly crash a conference and then speak at it. There's a saying, you never wanna ask for permission, you only wanna ask for forgiveness. That's actually not 100% true. That's guac guac guacamole recipe number, I think, 11. You want to stepwise crash the industry while simultaneously reporting and asking and updating and documenting. So you don't necessarily want to ask for permission, but you don't want to ask for forgiveness either. The way to do that is by using guac guac guacamole recipe permission versus forgiveness. I really need to stress that Doug Baldwin, Stanford three-year starter, seemingly awesome everything. He was told no seven times. That's like you trying to enter a party and after three times you're probably going to give up. And after four, five, six times you're definitely probably giving up. Instead, he heard no seven times by 32 different teams. Now he's a star for the Seattle Super Hawks. Of course, it's the Seattle Seahawks. I just can't say it. Just Seattle Seahawks. Although Richard Sherman does genius compositions and writing as well. Networking is tough work. And let's end on that. Networking is tough work. Uh, I hope that you'll also check out the homework. Totally optional. Google one or two conferences for the startup that you're editing. So one or two conferences that that startup's industry is in. Google those conferences. And then let's you and I come up with a way to hack and value addedly hijack that industry conference. Every industry conference, there's a way to add value to it. So Google one or two conferences that apply to the industry of the startup that you are editing. And let's try to augment and promote that conference, that industry conference, which is probably boring in Cincinnati, Ohio or freaking Evan Oakbrook, Illinois, and improve it. Meanwhile, editing and improving our own startup.